better covenant based upon better promises with a better priesthood glory to God that's why he's a personal savior you tell him your personal stuff I'm about to blow up up here we've got a better hope a better priesthood a better covenant better promises glory to God
better covenant based upon better promises with a better priesthood. Glory to God. That's why he's a personal savior. You tell him your personal stuff. I'm about to blow up up here. We've got a better hope, a better priesthood, a better covenant, better promises. Glory to God. Say amen. amen. And I love this because not only do we have a better hope, we have a better sacrifice. You know what Jesus did when John saw him? He said, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In the Old Testament, there was one lamb for one man. Then there was one lamb for one house. Then there was one lamb for one nation. But when John saw Jesus, he said, there's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the entire world. What a sacrifice we have in Jesus Christ. And he did it for me and for you. Somebody needs to get happy. The Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Imagine that. You say, what about my future sins? All your sins were future when he died on the cross for you. Give God a praise offering for his efficient, atoning grace. But now we have better possessions. Better possessions. The other day I went to the jewelry store to take my gold. Because how many know gold is like really high now? And you, you can do a lot of things with your gold money now. And so when I went to look in my jewelry box, I had some of those old gold nuggets. How many remember the gold nuggets? They were all squashed up together like they were nuggets. Yeah. Ugly, but we thought they were great. And I had a gold pendant, and I thought, I want to be buried in that. That, is, that rocks. That is so beautiful, that gold nugget. So I got my gold, took it down there, and everybody was laughing at me. So I went back to Mama's house, and I, I, I went in Mom's, Pam, and I said, Mom, let me show you what I just got. I pulled out $1,300 bills. Come on, flash, flash. She said, Jana Cherie. You know, your mama, when they get serious, they call you by your second name. She said, Jana Cherie. I says, Mom, I just went and got that old goal y'all was laughing about. Now I got me some money. Ha. Somebody say, Skrilla, Skrilla, Skrilla. I went and got me some Skrilla. Oh, yes, I did. And then I went shopping. Oh, yes, I did. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. Come on. So I sold all that gold. But, you know, I told my son the other day, I said, pick out a few things you want because Mama's going to sell everything and go on a vacation. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So I told my son, just get a few things, baby, you want because the rest of it I'm going to spend on the orphans and me. And I said, you know what, honey? After I take care of you, after I take care of my orphans, and I take care of myself, guess what? I want to die empty. Come on, somebody. You're not going to take it with you. Glory to God. Enjoy what you've got while you can. And my motto in life is get the cheese sticks, baby. Come on. Better possessions. I'm just going to read this. Hebrews 10, 32 through 39. Call to remembrance the former days. He said, you took joyfully the plundering of your possessions, knowing that in heaven you have a better possession and enduring substance. See, I want to tell you something. All of your life is not the dollars and cents that you have. It's not the car you drive. I want to tell you, I'm not real old, but I'm getting a little more ripe. And cute. I'm getting cute. And in my cuteness, I'm going to tell you what I'm finding out. I'm finding out the most important things in life are not things. And I hope you realize that before it's too late. Because it's relationships that God is into. He said the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net. Structurally, the kingdom of God is built on relationships. He said it's like a net. And whether it's coffee with a friend or if it's breakfast at home with canned biscuits and syrup, honey, build those relationships. Can I get an amen? Build those relationships. Grace has lost 50 pounds. You can't have any. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, everybody say better possessions. He said in Hebrews 10, 32 through 39, you can read it when you get home. And then he talks about this. He says, we have a better country. A better country. Hebrews 11, 13 through 16 talks about this. He said, for those who say such things make it clear that they're seeking a better country. 
I want to tell you something. We have, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed of them to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I want to tell you something. Some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good, and they forgot about the relationships God put in their life. I want to tell you, I want some heaven to go to heaven in. How about you? And heaven for me is the people in my life. Come on, somebody. I said heaven for me is the people in my life. You say, I want a miracle, a sign, and wonder. Honey, it's a miracle, a sign, and wonder when you can get along with somebody. Oh, to live above with the saints we love. Oh, that will be glory. But to live below with the saints we know, well, that's a different story. Amen. Better. Somebody say better inheritance. Say better name. Say better priesthood. Say better covenant. Say better possessions. And here's one. Hebrews eleven thirty five, a better resurrection. Amen. Amen. We also must have faith to know that regardless of the suffering we go through, we look for a resurrection to eternal life with Jesus Christ. He said a better resurrection. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. I want to close with this. Am I boring you so far? Who will give me five more minutes? Let me see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I've got plenty of time. Say better hope. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind. I will also write them upon their heart. I will be to them a God, and they will be to me a people. They will not teach every man his fellow citizen, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. I will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more. How many know that when Jesus Christ implemented the new covenant, the old one became useless? The old one became void. The old one became empty. The Bible said in Hebrews 8, 13, that which is old is ready to vanish away. Say hallelujah, somebody. It is done. One of my favorite sayings of Jesus on the cross is, it is finished. Say that with me. What did he mean? It. It, it, what it? It is finished. He meant the great plan of redemption was finished. I was reading Warren Wiersbe's commentary on these words, it is finished. Dr. Wiersbe says that this is a banking term, that in those days when you would come for a loan, you would have your loan written in the books. Every time you came to pay, it would be written in the books. And when that loan was paid off, you would take that book, you would close the book, and then the banker would make a statement It is finished. And would call throughout the bank. It is finished. And the Spirit spoke to me on that plane. And he said, Jana, if I have paid it all, if I have satisfied the mortgage, why are you still making payments? Recently, someone said to me, what are you giving up for Lent? I said, I ain't giving up nothing. Jesus paid it all. (laughs) Come on, somebody. Jesus paid it all. The more you can realize when he died, you died. When he got up, you got up. You are as he is in this world. He said, so are you. Jesus said, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. Do I have any future thinkers? You got to get rid of the past thinking and think of future thoughts. And future thought is not law. It is not old covenant. It is grace. It is mercy. It is hope. It is love. And it is new covenant. Can I get an amen? I was thinking this morning in the hotel praying. And I'm going to close. I'm coming to my second close. And I was praying and just just saying, God, you know, what what is it that I can tell your people? 
What can I tell them that they can live this life of hope? Because our two hours here on Sunday morning is not our life. Our life is lived in the trenches outside those doors. And I was asking God for a word of wisdom, something to help you, because I'm not a professional preacher. I'm, I run errands for Jesus, and I'm just running one here. Glory to God. And I was asking God, you know, what can I tell your people, Lord, that can stay with them, that can help them? And I said this morning in the hotel, God, what is the greatest enemy of this life of hope? As we walk here in this life, what is the greatest enemy of this life of hope? And I went to some of the sins of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh which are manifest are these. You can read those. I went to that passage in my mind and began to enumerate some of the sins and things we can name. And But then again, I was led by the Spirit to John chapter 10. I want you to put this up, John 10 and 10, and look at this passage. Because in the writings of Jesus, here's what he said in John 10 and 10. He said, the thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Say that. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. So as I looked at this text, I'm going to tell you, the thief is not the devil. We've been taught all of our life that the thief is the devil. The devil's not the thief. I'll tell you how much power that the devil has. Would you like for me to show you? I want you to take a piece of paper out this morning. It can be any kind of paper. I've got some paper right here from the hotel. I'm going to take this. Just get any kind of piece of paper. And um, you've got, you can borrow that. You can just get any kind of piece of paper. It doesn't matter what it is. Kleenex, a little corner. Let somebody share. You can cut it in half. And I want you to take this paper, whatever it is, because I'm going to represent to you something this morning that you won't forget. Because the thief of John 10 is not the devil. And you take this paper right here. Now, here's what I want you to do with it. Just, just put it under your feet. Now, that's the devil. And he is what? Defeated. Jesus took his feet off. He's defeated. And now he's under my feet. And the Spirit said to me, Jana, I want you to get used to saying the defeated devil. Instead of saying, the devil's trying to get me to do this, the devil's trying to get me to that, he says, say, the defeated devil. Say it, the defeated devil's trying to get me to. You see how ridiculous that is? We've got to have a new mindset. You say, well, what about warfare? Warfare is enforcing Christ's victory that he already bought. That's what it is. It's not getting victory. It's enforcing the victory that's already there. So who is the thief of John 10? If the thief's not the devil, this passage, read this whole chapter. You'll get a new revelation of this God of hope. This whole passage of John 10, Jesus said, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Who came before Jesus? The law. Who was it that came before Christ? The old covenant. The law that reminded you, you'll never live up to it. And even now, if I fast seven days, a voice says to me, why didn't you fast 14? Yes. If I fast 14 days, you should have went on a 21-day Daniel fast. If I pray one hour, why didn't you pray two hours? I can't do enough. I clean my house. My housekeeper comes in my house and said, you didn't get the baseboards. Because I'm not a housekeeper. I'm a straightener-upper. Come on, I got some straightener-uppers. I'm not a housekeeper, but I'm a straightener-upper. My housekeeper comes and said, you didn't get that dirt. You didn't get that dust. You didn't get I said, you know why I didn't get it? Because I'm a straightener-upper. You know why you're in here? Because you're a housekeeper. You're supposed to get that. I'm a straightener-upper. I'll straighten up. Like one time I was having company and my kitchen was such a mess, I took everything, put it in the bathtub, and shut the curtain. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. That's what I am. Everything, all the dishes went in the bathtub. Everything, all the pots, pots and pans, everything. I said, God, please don't let them use the restroom. Please. Please don't let them use the bathroom. Please, God, heal their kidneys, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm a straightener-upper, so that's what happens to me. I'm a straightener-upper. <laughs> Glory to God. You say, well, you need to straighten up. Yes, I do. Thank you, Jesus. But in Christ I am. Glory to God. I'm upright in him. Hallelujah. Where was I? I'm so happy. John 10, the thief. 
Jesus said, everyone that came before me are thieves and robbers. Who came before him? The law, the Levitical priesthood, all the 16, 613 commandments and statutes that Paul had memorized by the time he was 12 years old and he could never fulfill it. That's who came before Jesus. Jesus said, everyone that came before me are thieves and robbers. And here's what he said. If you get in the law, if you live by law, it's a thief. It's coming to steal everything you got. It's coming to kill you. It's coming to destroy you. The law brings destruction. The law law brings death. Read Romans 5. The law is an administration of death. And the Bible says if they could make it under that administration, how much more shall we not thrive in the new covenant by the new and living way? Come on somebody. A new hope. A new hope in God. Let me close with this. Oh wow. Did you get anything out of this? I'm, I'm going to be done. I'm not going to bore you anymore. Glory to God. I'm boring. The word's not boring. Okay. Now, here's, here's the way it is. Say a new hope. A new hope. Hebrews, what does it do? Show the superiority of Christianity over Judaism. Amen. What's the key word of Hebrews? Amen. What do we have? A better priesthood, a better covenant, better promises, a better name, a better country, better possessions, a better resurrection, and a better hope by which we draw near to God. Put Hebrews 7, 19 one more time, and I'm out of here. Thank you, Grace. Read this one time. I want to show you this one revelation about this better hope. The Bible said in Hebrews 7, 19, for the law never made anything perfect. But instead, a better hope. Do you know a better hope can give you an excellent life? But he switched the, the tables of the, of the passage. But, but. You tell your child, you can go that far with a car, but don't you go to that city. He said the law could never make you perfect, your children perfect, your family perfect. Nothing the law touches will ever make it perfect. But he said, but a better hope will give you an excellent life. Through which we now come close to God. Stand to your feet this morning. This better hope is our transportation into the presence of God. Lord, I thank you this morning for the revelation, God, that you're the God of all hope. God, you're touching lives right now. Come on, just pray for a few minutes, people. He's touching lives. God loves you. I'm praying for repentance this morning on two levels. Number one, I'm praying for repentance. For a walk with God. That would please Him that you walk worthy of the Lord. You said, Jan, I'm getting uncomfortable. Let me tell you, the goodness of God will lead you to repentance. So I'm just praying His goodness on you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. Secondly, I'm praying a prayer of repentance for those that need to repent. Re again, pent. Go all the way to the top to higher level thinking. Repent. I've had to do that so many times, Lord. I thank you now for repentance, a higher level of thinking based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Lord, you've done healings here this morning. You perform miracles throughout this weekend. God, I just thank you right now for repentance. On the first altar call this morning, repentance. You say, you know, I'm not walking with God and I know I need to walk with Him. I'm telling you, get ready for the goodness of God. I'm praying His goodness over your life. I'm speaking His goodness over you right now. If you'd like to be included in this prayer, just raise your hand for that goodness to come. That repentance will be solidified. Raise your hand right now, quickly, hurry. One hand is going up. Is there another one? Is there another hand? I want this goodness to be baptized in my life so that I would live closer to God through the goodness of God. Yes, I see that one. Another one. Thank you, Jesus. 
God, I thank you for these two hands. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. There's another one. Three. God, I thank you. Four. Thank you, Jesus. Five. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you right now. Glory to God. Your goodness. Your goodness, God. Your goodness. Your goodness. Your goodness. Your goodness. I'm expecting your goodness, God. And then on the second, repent. That you would come up to a higher level of thinking. That you would repent, return again to a top level thinking in the Word of God. Raise your hand if you want that prayer of faith this morning. Quickly. One hand. Two. Three. I can't count them all. There's so many. Fifteen. Oh my. Okay. So many all over this building. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a repentance coming to our lives, God. I thank you for a, a higher level, God. I just thank you, Jesus. God, you're renewing our mind by the word of God. And, and Lord, that is the only way, God, we're going to come up to that higher level. I thank you for it right now, God. I thank you for it, Jesus. Touch everyone that's watching us by streaming right now, Father. Heal bodies across the nations, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you that you're going into living rooms, God. You're going into houses right now, into the bedrooms, wherever they've got their computer on, Father. I just speak a release in the hotel rooms right now, God. I speak a release of your mighty power, Father. God, I thank you that it's a new day, a new hope, a better hope, based on better promises, a better name, God, a better glory. I thank you for it, Master. God, we expect something better. I thank you for that. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Now, everybody decree and declare with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare a better hope in my life based upon better promises with a better covenant and a better priesthood with a better possession and a better resurrection. I thank you for the new and living way. And right now, I decree and declare that better things are coming into my life better things are coming into my family's life better things are happening all around me